Welcome back. First Vice President Jenny Montgomery Scott, Stephen Carlton here with our weekly look at finance. David, always a pleasure. It, it is to see you. And we are tonight talking about Walmart, mm -hmm. food stamps, yep. gas prices, all kind of intertwined together. They are all connected. They're Absolutely. Big connection. Um, we've been talking about this, that uh, retail sales have been kind of flat for the start of the year, coming out of the last quarter of 2012. Mm -hmm. um, more news from Walmart, the Walmart indicator, if you will, right. uh, that there's some trouble out there. Yeah, you know, Walmart's a great barometer into the health of the lower and middle class families in America. And I think they've been kind of, they've been squeezed. There's no doubt about it. We've talked about the high gas prices. We've talked about inflation with food prices. And I think Walmart's been really good at acknowledging some of the challenges for the families, no doubt about it. Yeah, and they're talking, um, as you were saying, the, there was a couple of things that hit folks coming into the new year. They had the, the mm -hmm. gas prices were continuing to rise. We'll get to that in a moment. There right. could be some good news on that front. Uh, but also, we also, our paychecks yes, uh, yes. drop. Yeah, so that's the payroll tax. I mean, yeah. We were talking about that. A lot of families didn't realize. They thought the tax increases were only going to hit the upper class, you know, that, that 250 or more. The payroll tax was for everybody. And so everybody saw a 2% increase in their income uh, being, tax being increased. And uh, it affected a lot of families. Uh, you know, it, the food price is going up. Everything in, in, that you consume now is getting more expensive with inflation. So people are noticing. Yeah, I'm thinking if, you know, if folks are having trouble shopping at Walmart, I buy mm -hmm. a lot of my staples at Walmart. If mm -hmm. you're, you know, by far one of the cheapest places around. Right. So if you're having trouble filling your car to Walmart, there's some trouble out there for folks. Yeah, you know, the, the initial claims came out, and today they came out at 362,000. Well, if we look at 52 weeks ago, they were 362,000. So we've talked about how the numbers really haven't improved. It may have improved on Wall Street. No. The indexes have gone up, the stock market. But for the average American family who doesn't survive off of the stock market, that really is dependent on their paycheck, this hasn't been a particularly robust recovery, and so there's a lot of a lot of challenges that they're working through. Yeah, I'm hearing more and more reports of folks that are just going paycheck to paycheck, and it's yeah. just it's not a good situation for anybody. Um, that being said, going paycheck to paycheck, um, mm. some startling news out of Saratoga County uh, this week. Actually, the Saratogian reporting these numbers. They did the number crunching, mm. um, so credit to them. Food stamp applications in the last 10 years in Saratoga County doubled. Mm -hmm. So here's just some of the numbers for you. Um, in 2003, 4,035 people made an application for, uh, for food stamps, the, uh, the benefit. Um, in 2012, 7,129, nearly doubling in that 10-year period. Mm -hmm. Currently, 15,439 people are being served by this. And and, you know, that's a staggering number for Saratoga County. You know, thank goodness for these types of programs. If it wasn't for people like Franklin Community Center in Saratoga, the, you know, the Salvation Army, the food stamp programs, these are families that there's no other place for them to turn to. And so this is really a good indicator that there is a whole cross-section of America that are not participating in the recovery. Yeah. And uh, this is something for them that this is the difference between having food on the table at night and, and not having it. So this is a, a very, very important program. Yeah, one more startling statistic there that I left out. Mm. In uh, January, it was their record month. The most in one month, 799 people applying for food stamps. Yeah. And we're also not looking at this as the lower income. I, I mean, it's understandable there's some families that are on food stamps because they're a single parent, they've got two children to feed. Yep. Uh, but we're now looking at when you're getting higher into this middle class, and they have yeah. to now apply for this because they've either lost their jobs, they've got mortgages, there's so many different factors now. I've heard this a lot in Saratoga in the last six months. People talking about one of the, the couples, you know, a husband or wife losing their job somebody getting their hours cut. Uh, it doesn't take too much for families that you know, are already tight to begin with. If one of them lose their job, it, it can really have a dramatic effect. So yeah, I think, I think everybody knows somebody that has lost a job or has had, you know, gotten a new job that doesn't pay quite as much. And uh, yeah, this is, this is the place they have to turn to. Yeah, cycling back around to every time the consumer confidence numbers come out, folks, are, uh, those reports are saying that those that they, uh, they poll say that food prices Gasoline mm -hmm. prices mm -hmm. are the two major factors. I know it myself. You know, yeah. dry, I drive uh, 15 miles, um, 30 miles round trip each day. Absolutely, it adds up after a while. So gas mm -hmm. prices have just continued to rise. I think uh, today um, Megan and I went out for lunch real quick, and it was 3.89 at some of the gas stations that are mm -hmm. usually the cheaper gas stations in town. So yeah. they're all heading for that $4 mark for regular. They're already $4 for premium. 
Yeah, we, we talked a little bit about this, David, last week. And, and, you know, a lot of people in Saratoga were, were saying, you know, when are the gas prices going to go down? You know, Steve, is it ever going to end? Is this going to go to five, six dollars? And, and I kind of said to me, things are starting to top out. Well, we got some good news this week. We saw, you know, oil crude prices going to almost 100. I said it looked like it was kind of topping. Now we're down below 93. Those price drops are going to start to be reflected in the pump. You're going to see as the crude price drops, gasoline, refined gasoline that shows up at your gas station, those prices will drop. It doesn't happen overnight. There's time to process and go through the refineries, but we will eventually see some of that price uh, pressure drop off. Yeah, you, and, and we should say, we could go to the tape or you go to the website. You called this last week that crude oil prices were going, were going to top off. So, uh, uh, you know, kudos to you for, for that. But you did say that it was going to top off. It's now done it, but now mm -hmm. we have to wait for the triple, trickle down effect. Right, we, we saw the demand dropping off. People, like, like you're saying, people aren't driving as much. They're not going out to dinner as much. They're not going to the movie. They're making decisions to drive less or drive more efficiently. Yeah. So that demand is, is reducing uh, supply starts to build up, and so hopefully that'll start to you know take some of the pressure off the, the local families. Yeah, that'll be good. If I could have a ride home tonight, that would be great. <laughs> Absolutely, anytime, David. Right. <laughs> Stephen Carlton, first vice president, Jenny Montgomery Scott. Thank yeah. you. We'll see you next week, sir. Always a pleasure. And to see this look at finance segment, all our segments, they're all listed on the website. Go to looktvonline.com and search look at finance.